Welcome back to Master Data Management 1. In the previous video, you were introduced to the interface of the MDM platform. We are just about ready to start building our MDM solution, but before we do, we need to understand the business use case. It will provide us with a simple, real-life challenge that we will overcome by creating an MDM solution. So let's get started. For this particular use case, we're going to assume a company maintains contact information for customers across their organization. These contact records are predominantly generated by sales representatives in Salesforce upon initial creation of a closed or one opportunity. Once an opportunity has been marked as closed or won, all subsequent communication information is maintained within an organization tracking system, in our case, a MySQL database, which is used by support and professional services team members. Over time, these contact records are becoming inconsistent across these disparate systems. In other words, the information is coming into Salesforce effectively during the initial creation of the data. However, the rest of the company does not use Salesforce. As these other departments continue to work with the client, they update the client's information on the MySQL database. The issue we're seeing is that the database has very current contact information for the clients, but Salesforce ends up having outdated data. In order to remedy this problem, we're going to create an MDM solution that will pull data from each of these sources and create a single source of truth, hosted in the contact repository. We will be leveraging the Atmosphere platform to sync our data from Salesforce and database into our MDM platform. If we take a look at the image on the screen, we can see a simple depiction of the high-level structure that we'll be creating. At the bottom, we have our two sources that have similar but differing data. We're going to connect to each of these sources through the Atmosphere processes, just as you've seen in the Boomi Essentials course. Once we've pulled in the desired documents into the Atmosphere platform, we will transform the data and move it into the MDM platform through a special MDM connector shape. Once in the MDM platform, we can master the data and create that single source of truth, which can then be pushed back into each of the sources as an update so all systems are using the same data. To get started, we will first need to define what a contact is from the perspective of a golden record. A good place to start is to ask yourself, what fields do we need to collect in order to effectively contact a client? The list of fields that satisfy that question becomes your starting place to create your golden record. Next, we will create a relevant model consisting of the fields identified in step one. We will then configure the Salesforce and MySQL sources and identify their level of contribution to the newly defined contact domain. For now, think of the contact domain as the model. At this stage, we will simply prepare the ID of the source that we will reference later in the class. Then we will execute the initial load from our MySQL source into the contact domain. This will give us our first golden records to interact with. We will then be able to load in our Salesforce data to see the changes and restrictions we put upon that source. And then finally, we will add additional features to increase the quality of our data and filtering capabilities. These features include data quality steps and tags. Now you're probably wondering how we go from a simple idea of a golden record to actually having a finished MDM solution. The answer is by following the MDM lifecycle. As a reminder, we will start by defining our MDM solution when we create our contact repository. We're going to set up our models and match rules and identify our sources. Remember, a source is simply any application or database you need to connect to. We will then deploy our model by defining which sources we want to use and attach the model to our contact repository. We will then synchronize our Atmosphere and MDM platforms by constructing an Atmosphere process to connect our source applications, MySQL and Salesforce, to our MDM platform via the MDM connector shape. And finally, we will run a test via test mode in our Atmosphere platform and watch as the data flows from our MySQL database into our contact repository. Starting with the define step, we are able to accomplish our main goal of reducing poor quality data and resolution time. We will identify the fields that will make up our golden record, which will be our single source of truth. This is the first step in increasing data quality. Our technical objectives include 
designing our model by selecting the fields we will be using. We'll build match rules that will determine if the data is a new record or an update to an existing record. We will create a data quality step that will remove incorrect records, and we will insert tags to group records together. Now that you understand the define step, we can start building the pieces that make up our overall MDM solution. The first piece we will build is the contact repository. This is essentially a container that holds all of your models, sources, and golden records. Since we will be collecting contact data, we will name this particular repository contact. On a more technical level, a repository is actually a specially configured atom used to host models and their associated master data that are deployed to the Dell Boomi MDM Atom Cloud. We will learn more about the repository in the following exercise. I will now demonstrate exercise number two, where you will learn how to create a contact repository. I recommend you follow along in the activity guide while I demonstrate, and then you can try it yourself after the video is over. I'm going to switch over to the Atomsphere platform so we can pick up where we left off. So once we're in the Atomsphere platform, we're actually going to need to start by moving over to our MDM platform so we can start creating our solution over there. The way we accomplish this is if you go to the upper right hand corner of your screen, you'll notice that there is a white box with blue text that says Atomsphere. If you hover your cursor over that box, you'll notice that a couple other options come down from that drop down menu. One of them is MDM. What you can do then is hover your cursor over the MDM option and you can either left click that or you can also open a new tab by right clicking it and clicking open link in new tab. The reason I recommend this is because we will need to switch between our Atomsphere and MDM platforms later on, and uh, each of the platforms will actually update in real time. So instead of having to constantly switch between the two by clicking up in the right-hand corner, you can simply click back and forth between the D2 tabs. Once the MDM platform loads, you'll notice that you can see the MDM repository screen is our default screen. In order to create your new repository, you'll simply click on the Create a Repository button located in the center of the screen here or at the bottom of this MDM Repositories window. And when you click on that, it will then open up a new window. From here, you can select your Atom or Cloud. In this case, we only have one option, which is MDM Cloud. So that's the selection we will select. And for the repository name, we're simply going to name it Contact, since this is going to hold our contact information. Once you've completed that, simply click the OK button, and you'll notice now we are inside our contact repository. If you'd like to see the contact repository from the repository screen, you can simply go to the upper left-hand corner where it says Repositories, click on that tab, and now we can see our contact repository exists within the Repositories tab. If you click on the actual contact repository, uh, anywhere within this square, it will then bring you inside of the repos that particular repository, so then you can start adding things like models and sources, uh, which we will do in a later exercise. So that is going to conclude exercise number two. So now it's your turn to try it on your own. So go ahead and follow the activity guide and complete exercise number two. And then once you've completed exercise two, you can then start the next video.